Hello and welcome to Annotations 101 using Kami. So if you've never used Kami before or it's been a while and you need a quick refresher, uh, I'm going to show you how to annotate using the first two paragraphs of the Scarlet Ibis, which we're about to start reading. So you need to know how to use Kami so you can annotate as we read along in the Scarlet Ibis. Now, this little worksheet here gives you some little step-by-step -step hints as to what things you should be looking for. But in the future, if we're reading something else and you're annotating on Kami, uh, typically you want to be focused on whether the work you're reading is has positive or negative conno connotative words. You want to be focusing on words that deal with the theme of the work that you're reading. And you want to focus on imagery. Uh, does the work that you're reading use figurative language to produce certain images? And what kind of images are those? Uh, are they positive images or negative images? Do those images have some special meaning for the theme? So that's the kind of things you're going to be looking for when you're annotating with other uh, works of literature. But for these first two paragraphs of the Scarlet Ibis, we're going to be focused on these things that it points out at the top of this worksheet. Now I'm going to do the first paragraph for you. You need to do the second paragraph. This is going to be for a grade, so make sure you pay attention to what I'm doing. Make sure you follow each one of these steps that you see at the top up here uh, so that you can get full credit. And then as you read the full text, when we start reading together, uh, you'll know the kinds of things that you need to be looking for uh, to annotate on your own. Now, the first thing we are going to do is focus on these first two steps. Draw a box around words with negative connotation and circle words associated with death. Now, death itself, words that are associated with death, they automatically have a negative connotation. So we're going to ignore words about death uh, when we're drawing boxes because death words could obviously be uh, considered uh, having negative connotation. So if we come across a death word, we're going to make sure we're circling that instead of drawing a box around it. All right, so let's look at negative connotative words. These are words that may not necessarily have a dictionary definition that's negative, uh, but these are words that generate more negative emotions inside us. They're sad or they make us angry, or they just upset us in some way. So these are negative connotative words. We're going to focus on that first. Now it says draw a box around those words. So we're going to come over here to our left-hand uh, panel here. We're going to click on shapes, and it's going to pull this box out here. We're going to make sure that we select insert rectangle because we're trying to draw a box. Now I've selected the color red. Uh, because to me, red is kind of a negatively connotative color. But you can choose any color that you think is going to signify a negative connotation to you. So I'm going to select red, and we're going to read this first paragraph and uh, put a box around any words that have negative connotations. So it was in the clove of season, summer, was dead. Again, dead does have a negative connotation, but we're doing something with it for number two. We're circling it. So we're going to move on. But autumn had not yet been born that the ibis lit in the bleeding tree. Bleeding, to me, has a negative connotation. So we're going to put a box around the word bleeding to signify that it has, that's a negative word. So the flower garden was strained Strained has a negative connotation with rotting, nasty, rotting brown magnolia pet petals. Okay, so rotting has a negative connotation. And iron weeds grew rank. 
They smell bad. <clears throat> Amid the purple flocks, the five o'clocks by the chimney still marked time, but the oriole nest in the elm tree was untenanted. There's nothing in that nest. And rocked back and forth like an empty cradle. That's a sad image there. An empty cradle. The last graveyard. Again, that word has to do with death. So even though it's negative, we're going to skip it for right now. Because uh, we got to do something with it with number two. So the last graveyard flowers were blooming and their smell drifted across the cotton field and through every room of our house, speaking softly the names of our dead. Okay, so we've got number one. Those are the words that I have chosen that I think have negative connotations. All right, so we move on to number two, circle words associated with death. So we're going to come over here to our panel again, make sure we have shapes selected, and we need a circle. It says ellipse. Uh, where is it going to be a circle? Okay, I'm going to make this green just to differentiate it from our negative words. So again, let's go through again. Summer was dead, but autumn had not yet been born. The, the ibis lit in the bleeding tree. Flower garden was strained with round, uh, round magnolia petals. Uh, five o'clock by the chimney still marked time. Oriole nest was untenanted. The last graveyard. That's a death word. Or blooming. Smell drifted across the cotton field through every room of our house, speaking softly the names of our dead. So those are the words from the first paragraph that have to do with death. Number three, underline once the images that show deterioration or are unpleasant. Now, some of these words are going to be words that we've already marked. We're going to select the insert line here. And I'm going to make this blue. And we're talking about words that show deterioration. Things are kind of rotting away or disintegrating or decomposing. So let's go through it one more time. All right, not even born. Flower garden. So uh, the first sentence, clove. Now, this just means the separation, but what they're saying here is that uh, it's the end of one season and the beginning of another. I'm going to underline that because the uh, summer season is going away. So I'm going to underline clove for clove of seasons, just because I think that that shows how summer is deteriorating as autumn comes into focus. All right, flower garden was strained, rotting. I know we've already got that with a box around it, but I'm gonna underline it because that shows deterioration. Brown magnolia petals, iron weeds grew rank. We can underline that too. So that's all of the, the deterioration words that I can find. Uh, it says underline twice the images that are pleasant. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pick yellow. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to underline them twice for words that are pleasant. Uh, to me, summer is a pleasant word. Autumn had not yet been born. Uh, flower to me is a pleasant word. Underline it twice. Uh, the five o'clock still marked time, oriole nest, rocked back and forth. Graveyard flowers were, were blooming. The last graveyard flowers were blooming. To me, blooming is a positive word, a pleasant word. And that's all. All right, number five, highlight examples of figurative language. So we're going to come up here to markup in our little sidebar here. Click that. Make sure text highlighter is selected. Uh, I'm going to pick green. Oh, no, let me pick pink because I haven't used that yet. All right, so we're looking for figurative language. 
the clove of seasons. Uh, it says summer was dead. Okay, uh, that is personifying summer. So that's a form of figurative language. Uh, summer's not a, a living thing that can die, but it's talking about summer that way. Uh, same here with autumn. Autumn had not yet been born. That's another personification. Uh, so we want to highlight that. <clears throat> uh, the five o'clock uh, by the chimney still marked time. Again, some more personification. The Oriole nest in the elm was untenanted and rocked back and forth like an empty cradle. Remember a uh, comparison that uses the word like or as. That's a simile. So that's a figurative uh, language. Uh, their smell drifted across the cotton field and through every room of our house speaking softly the names of our dead. Again, some more personification there. So we want to highlight that. Okay, that's all of the figurative language for paragraph one. Uh, write your ideas about the diction, imagery, and figurative language in the margins. What do the words, images, and comparisons make you think of or feel? Why are, they, uh, why are these specific words, images, and comparisons important to the context of the story? So I'm going to open up a text box here. I'm going to, eh, orange is probably not the best to use here. Let's go with purple. <clears throat> so in the margins, I'm just going to make a text box here. Just big enough to fit there. And I'm just going to tell what I think about the stuff that I have highlighted and marked and all this stuff. Uh, why is it important uh, and how does it make me feel? So uh, I think it's very clear that there are more uh, negative words than positive. I think death is clearly a theme in this paragraph uh, due to how how many death related words that we've uh, circled I think it gives me a negative mood but I don't want to just say negative mood I want to come up with a a specific mood the mood is somber or depressing I even want to point out that the mood kind of makes me feel of mourning. And I'm not talking about when the day starts. I'm talking about mourning, like mourning the passing of someone, uh, like at a funeral. Somber and, or depressing, like mourning at a funeral. And why are the specific words, images, and comparisons important to the context of the story? So based on these based on the words used or we can say diction that's what that means the word diction so based on the word choice that the author has has used in this paragraph i believe that this story is going to heavily involve death okay just based off of the word choice uh, that the author has chosen. I think that the story is going to involve death in some way, shape, or form. So that's what I think about this first paragraph. Now, uh, I hope that you marked this up along with me. Now it's your turn to mark up in the same way the second paragraph. So go do that. You're on your own. If you have any other questions or need to know how to do something, you can just replay this video. How about it? All right, so get to work. <laughs>